So we did this Dharmata EP and the Disposal of the Dead EP before. And um, with the Dharmata stuff, we really went into the tech, the old school tech death kind of progressive and jazzy kind of um, influences. And like just learning how to play that stuff made us like, we came up like with all these different ideas like, oh, you can do this and the bass can play this while the guitar plays something completely else. And I know there were just new techniques coming up. And I think now what we did was we were just doing the normal vocals again, like the guttural vocals and the, the brutal death kind of style. But we still worked with those techniques and new patterns and stuff, you know? I think that's basically what happened. I feel like um, 94 we were kind of, we kind of had the same kind of goals. You mean, you know, like 93 is like when Cynic um, released the Focus album, for example. Um, that was huge for us, you know, just how they put in the more um, funky, jazzy kind of drumming and all the prog elements, you know, and um, that that was one thing. And also there was just the, the actual jazz fusion that we've listened back then. The thing is, in 94, I was literally uh, uh, um, 12 years old, you know, so I just couldn't play that stuff so over the years now I can actually understand what was going on in those uh, jazz fusion things or classical composition is another thing that I got really really interested in and um, yeah all that stuff is really sunk in now and of course I went through studies for music too and um, yeah I guess I just kept working and working and now I guess it's, it's really closer to what I wanted to do in 90, 1994. If you make this kind of crazy stuff, then you gotta be extra tight and extra... The ideas have to be super um, catchy and super um, engaging, you know? And um, that's what I've always looked out for, that there's really composition, you know? More people have said, uh, this is my favorite uh, album you've ever put out, and that's like, when did we release that? It's a month in or something, you know? And um, they've had time with the album and they still stick to that opinion. And um, there's been this uh, big thing about Sounds of the Moribund, our second album being m most people's fave, I think. And um, even people like that said, okay, this is now my new favorite. You know? So I'm. I've, I've worked for that, I wanted to make it the best album, but just the way it came out, I thought it was just a little too crazy. Corona pressed pause, so I don't want to write another album now. I'd rather wait until we can go on stage with this album and do that first. And I mean, you can al already write, but writing a new album, I feel absolutely no pressure, you know, because um, we also kind of finished our last contract with, uh, with the label and yeah, no one is supposed to get anything from us so we're just, the, the ball is on our court pretty much and um, yeah, we're just, uh, we're just taking our sweet time with the next one to look where it goes, you know, but yeah, I don't, I, I don't want to finish a, another album and let this album fade into obscurity literally you know i, I want to bring that shit on stage and if it takes a, a year or whatever then fine but we want to do the whole thing you know we want to do uh, play the entire album live for the next tour just everybody hang tough we'll be on stage you'll be in the audience and um I think there will be a real connection there because uh, once we get back on uh, doing our thing, I think everybody will really enjoy uh, this thing that's been gone for like, I don't know, a few months already now, like uh, half, half a year at least. Be ready, like, because I'm practicing my ass off and I can actually play that stuff. I can play it right now. I could, I could go on tour tomorrow, so if we're coming, it's gonna be awesome. I'm